All right, Shalom. Shalom, giving all praises, all glory, all honors unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rukakadach. Double honors to the apostles, the elders, the bishops, the great millstone. Peace and best to the 144,000 and the rest of the hopeful elect. <clears throat> uh, this is Brother Zaiwan from GMS Atlanta. I'm back with another edifying lesson. And uh, I want to go into this article. <clears throat> Which uh, this has been uh, brought out before by you know, apostles and different brothers, but you know I want to say my piece on it and 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 uh, speak this edifying information to those out there that believe in this truth and those that are coming into the knowledge of this truth, dealing with uh, Christ. All right and. This uh, this thing, this word, you know, dealing with Christianity and Christians and, like I said, Christ, and that that name was attributed to an idol in times past. Okay. The first time history sees Christ or Christos is during the Greek Empire. Not after who the world entering calls Jesus Christ was on the scene and they were called Christians. Um, so this is a, a bit of history that I found. And... Uh, I'm going to read it here. It says, Jesus Christos. Now, Jesus, that is how you would say Jesus going back over 2,000 years ago because the letter J wasn't invented until the 1500s A.D. So, <clears throat> so his name would have been pronounced Jesus. All right. Now, you know, these are Greek terms here. It says, Jesus Christos and Serapis Christos, the label Christian. So it says, in the Greek world, and this is why it's important to understand history, all right? When you get into the Bible and you say you're a follower and believer in the Bible, you have to... All right. Uh, uh, so let me read this. It says, in the Greek world, when the Greek Ptolemaic pharaohs ruled Egypt. Now, what I was saying was, you have to know history when you get into the Bible. Right? You have to have some kind of scholarly um, knowledge of the Bible to truly understand it. Okay? And that takes time. That takes study. Going into the past, going into the history, going into these world empires that we were taught in the school system and have a working knowledge of uh, uh, what was happening back then so you can understand what's happening now. What was happening at the time when you had the Israelites in Jerusalem and what was happening when uh, Yahweh Shai was on the scene. Okay? So it says in the Greek world, when the Greek Ptolemaic pharaohs ruled Egypt, a new God was created. Now these, now when you go into history with the Egyptians, and you'll see now, how it is today with Hollywood, you have it to where so-called white people will portray pharaohs like King Tut, um, King Tut, um, Imhotep, you know, these different pharaohs. But then you'll see, when you get deep into the history of Egypt, you'll see white people um, as pharaohs. Well, that was true. But that was during the time of the Greeks and the Ptolemaic Empire was ruling over Egypt. Now, of course, when you go back before the Greek Empire and Ptolemy, the pharaohs and the rulers were, were black, okay, so-called black, uh, dark-skinned people, but they weren't Israelites, okay? The West Africans and the East Africans in Egypt are two different nations, okay? 
The West Africans are Israelites for the most part, and the East Africans are Hamites. We're not the same, although we do have dark skin. But during the time of Ptolemy, all right, you had white people ruling, which were Edomites, and they created this new god. Now, I'm going to read on. It says, this god was named Serapis or Serapis Christos. The purpose of this God was to unite the Greek and Egyptian pantheons. So that's what happened in the history. All right. The Edomite Greeks, which uh, came, which uh, Ptolemy came out of the, uh, the uh, four generals that ruled after Alexander the Great or Alexander the Greek in history. And they took over certain kingdoms and certain aspects of the kingdom. You know, they took down Persia and Ptolemy ruled over Greece. Okay? And a lot of this history is recorded uh, via prophecy in Daniel the eleventh chapter. So they were merged so Esau merged his ideologies in the Egyptian pantheons with the Greeks, and that's how you get this new God. So it says Christos is the Greek word for Christ. Christos is the translation of the Hebrew word Messiah or Mashiach. Okay? And this is history now. Now, Messiah or a Christ is anyone that acts to lead his people to salvation. When the Jews, or really the Israelites, when the Israelites were looking for their Messiah, they were expecting a warrior who would conquer the lands for them. Several Israelites were seen as a Messiah, and some are recorded in the Maccabees. This is why you have to read the Apocrypha, the book of First and Second Maccabees. It says, this is one reason they rejected, it says Jesus, but, and it says Yeshua, but his name is Yahawashai, because he did not come to obliterate the Roman Empire. Yeah, he didn't. He came to preach and prophesy first. Now, he will come. And see, that's what they didn't understand about the prophecies and what Yahweh Shai's true mission was. First, he was coming to bring the knowledge and the Holy Spirit to his followers. And then, once the gospel spread in his return, the second return, or what's known as the second advent of the Messiah, that's when he was going to come back as a warrior and not meet thee as a man, come back with fire. That's what we're waiting on now. But when he came 2,000 years ago, they were ready for Yahweh Shah to take the kingdom down back then. All right? When you read Acts, okay, matter of fact, let me get the scripture. Uh, you know what? Let me do this. Let me go to, because what I want to do, because I got so many tabs up, what I want to do is, All right, let me get this word, pantheons. But what I want to do is, see here, here we go, links. Nah, let me see here. You know what, I know what I'll do. Let's, uh, let's do this. Open a new tab. But then I want to go to the blue letter Bible. All right. And let's get to Acts. The first chapter. Yep. Okay. Acts the first chapter. And this is what even the Lord's disciples were waiting for. When Yahweh was resurrected. This is Acts chapter 1. Verse 6. It says, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power. So they were waiting, you know, waiting for, you know, they knew that, you know, Yahweh Shai, the Messiah would have to die and, you know, be resurrected and come back and restore the kingdom. But they didn't understand how 
the Lord set the times up, how the Mosai set things up to be played out. So they was was ready for Yahweh Shai, especially after coming back to life after three days uh, uh, in the sepulcher. You know, they were ready for Yahweh Shai to take Rome down then. Okay? But this is what they didn't understand. But Yahweh Shai told them, Acts 1 and 8, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. <clears throat> all right. And the uttermost part of the earth is over here in uh, America, Babylon the Great. All right. And also different countries scattered around the world, but mainly over here. This is the uttermost part of the earth. So. There's no records of the apostles and disciples 2,000 years ago prophesying over here, here on this side of the world. So this is where reincarnation and that understanding is, um, is applied here to that the, the past apostles and disciples had to live their lives in that time, the first century A.D., being be reincarnated here in these last days, in these current times, to prophesy again. This is why you see Israelites all over the street corners, all over America teaching. Okay? But they thought that the kingdom would be restored back to Israel again, and the Messiah would take down Rome back then. And that's why you had the Zealots and certain other groups. And then they mentioned about how they rejected Yahweh Shai because... They didn't um, understand, even though he was the Messiah. Okay, so now going back, and this is a short article. So now it says, so there were Messiahs and Christ before Yahweh Shai. So there were people called Christ before that. And you got these false idols, like what we're talking about here, Serapis Christus from the uh, Ptolemaic Egyptian rulership. Back then, it says Yahweh Shai is the Messiah, is the Messiah or the Christ, right, the anointed one, because Christ and Messiah means anointed, or to smear on the anointing. There are Messiah and Christ as well as false messiahs, false Christ and Antichrist after Yahweh Shai. Right, and you have that today. Now that I have established that the word Messiah and Christ does not belong to just Yahweh Shai, I will go back to Serapis. And this is what I want to be pointed out here. The followers of Serapis have been called the bishops, the bishops of Christ and its Christians, meaning followers of Christ. In that case, followers of Serapis Christos. So this was a new God created in Ptolemaic Egypt, that was called Christ, and you had Christians back then. The religion of Serapis has been around since at least 323 B.C. This is why it's important to not call upon Christ and call upon the Messiah by his true name, Yahweh Shai. There was no J, all right? And, and Christ was the name of another God, all right? Applying that title to the god Serapis. Which Serapis goes back to a bull, a cow god of the ancient Egyptians. So you can understand. It says before, matter of fact, I'll show you. Let's look up this word Serapis. And here you go, Serapis. Serapis is, or Serapis is a Greco Egyptian god, a, syn a syncretic deity derived from the worship of the Egyptian Osiris and Apis. Right, Apis the bull. Okay? Apis was a, a bull god. Serapis was extensively popularized in the 3rd century B.C. on the or orders of Greek pharaoh Ptolemy I Soter as a means to unify the Greek and Egyptian subjects of the Ptolemaic kingdom. The cultus of Serapis was spread as a matter of deliberate policy by subsequent Ptolemaic kings. And who does this guy look like? The Jesus Christ idol of today. 
okay? Long hair, beard, and the Ptolemies were so-called white people, Edomites. So their God was as well. A God with a flower pot on his head because it was supposed to represent uh, um, prosperity. Okay? All these gods are just idols. Even Christ, even Jesus Christ, going back to Serapis Christ, is just an idol. But the true Messiah was Yahawashai. Okay? It says, before followers of Yahawashai were called Christians, they were just followers of the way. Yeah, what way? The way of Yahawashai. When you read John, let me go to the scriptures. Let's go to John chapter 10. And let's see what Yahawashai himself said about the way. Okay, let me see. John 10. Grab me for a second. This is good. Man, let me see. I am the way. I am the way. Okay, John 14. All right. So this is John chapter 14. John 14 and 6. Well, I read verse 5. It says, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Yahweh saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Yahweh is the person that you follow in order to get back with the Heavenly Father and His good graces, and He was only coming to the Israelites because only the Israelites were the people of the Heavenly Father back then and now. Okay? So Yahweh Shai was the way. All right? And they were followers of the way. That's all they were. They were just followers of the way of Yahweh Shai. Followers of Yahweh Shai. Disciples of Yahweh Shai. It says, Acts... 11 and 26 records that the followers of Yahweh Shai were first called Christians in Antioch. But why? Yahweh Shai was called Christos in Greek, and those speaking Greek but ignorant of Yahweh Shai would have thought that the Christ they followed was Serapis Christos. So it was a mis it was a misnomer. And so they were given the same name. It was a misnomer. Okay? It was a misnomer. You know, meaning a misname. All right? They weren't actually followers of Serapis Christus, but because you got to remember, you had Israelites that spoke Greek and were Hellenized and Jews that were Hellenized in the past, and that's all they knew. So when they heard Paul and the and uh, uh, the other men teaching the gospel, saying in the Greek tongue, remember, uh, even the apostles Peter and the others had got the cloven tongues on Pentecost in Acts the second chapter. Okay, and then you had Israelites that were converting, and they spoke Greek, and they were speaking to the other. Greek speaking Jews or Greek speaking Israelites among the heathen and the Gentiles back then. So the only Christos that they knew was Serapis Christus based on the Greco Roman God. Uh, I'm sorry, the Greco Egyptian God, Serapis Christus. So it says, Some who enter into the way of Yahawashai continue to follow Serapis as well, thinking the two were the same. 
Now, it is not clear when the followers of Serapis were first called Christians, right? But you got to understand, if you're a follower of Serapis Christus, then you will be a Christos follower, right? Or Christian, or Christianos. So, so this makes sense. This was an actual God in the past, okay? And who does he look like? He looks like Jesus, right? Let's see. When you look up that... When you look up Jesus, this is what you get. See? See? This isn't the, the Messiah. It looks just like the God Serapis Christus. This isn't how the Messiah truly looked. Okay? Okay. So this is... This is a... the uh, idol Serapis Christus, but really who the world ignorantly calls Christ and Jesus was a so-called black man by the name of Yahweh Shai. Okay? And he didn't look like this. He didn't look like this idol here. Okay? So that's where we have to have the truth come out in these last days. And this is why Israelite and this truth is spreading all over the world. Okay? So I just want to bring, you know, this information out, you know, dealing with Christ. And you can't have Israelites calling on Christ when the true Christ, just call him by his name. His name is Yahweh Shai. We're supposed to proclaim that name. Not call on the names attributed to ancient idols and ancient, uh, and ancient <coughs> excuse me, the ancient gods. All right? But with that, you know, I hope this is edifying. Shalom.